this is Black Thought. I'm your host, Dr. Hutchinson. And we are so pleased to have with us the Executive Director of the Lot Carry Foreign Mission Convention, Dr. David L. Goatley. Good to see you, my brother. It's good to see you, Dr. Hutchinson. Thanks for having me on the show today. All right, our pleasure. Now, let us talk to the audience about Lot Carry. Many people are not familiar with your organization. Tell us something about it. Well, Lot Carry is a global Christian missions agency uh, that works to extend the Christian witness throughout the world. Our approach is to partner with indigenous communities in various parts of the globe and uh, share prayer partnership, financial support, and technical assistance uh, to enable them to strengthen their capacity uh, for ministries of evangelism, compassion, empowerment, and advocacy. Uh, so together we're touching lives with touching lives with the transforming love of Christ. Uh, the name of the organization, Lot Carey, uh, comes from uh, a person who was born enslaved in 1780 in Charles City County, Virginia. He was given the name Lot Carey. Uh, in 1807, he made his profession of faith in Christ, became a disciple of Jesus. In 1813, he purchased his own freedom. And in 1821, he was the leader of the first Baptist missionaries to go to Africa from the United States. Wow. So we're blessed to be a part of that heritage of uh, the Reverend Lot Carey, again, born enslaved, uh, found his freedom in Christ, then bought his freedom out of slavery. 1821 uh, was the leader of the first uh, Baptist missionaries to go to Africa from the United States. That's something that uh, people don't normally get in their history classes, mm -hmm. uh, that the first uh, Baptist missionaries to Africa from the United States uh, were Africans who had bought their freedom. So we try to keep alive uh, that uh, spirit of uh, being a pioneer uh, and of uh, being innovative and of uh, working to help people uh, to know uh, the transforming love of Christ. Well, you said a couple of interesting things. The first thing is, unlike many other organizations, mission organizations, you all don't try to send missionaries, so to speak, but you try to work with the Christian organizations that are already in the countries where you serve. Kind of open that up and talk to us more about that. Yeah, the uh, tradition of uh, missional work uh, has been to, for example, a, a church or a group of churches or an organization in the United States to send a missionary out of that community to go and preside over some scope of work in another country. Uh, that has been a part of the history in some ways and uh, in the history of missions, it worked uh, well. In other ways, it's been really terrible, mm -hmm. where people uh, failed to be able to separate uh, uh, bringing Christ from bringing their culture. Mm -hmm. And people who had uh, integrated too much uh, what their uh, contextual practices and cultural practices were and fused them with their understanding of the Christian message. And so it got really complicated uh, that people were really bringing culture rather than uh, bringing a Christian witness. Mm -hmm. uh, our approach, and we think it's appropriate for the 21st century, uh, is to, with rare, rare exceptions for us to be a supporting agency in our uh, industry of being missional agencies. There are some that are sending agencies. So, for example, they may take somebody out of the church where you serve mm -hmm. and send that person, and then their money follows their missionary. Mm -hmm. The way that we do it, we provide uh, prayer partnership, financial support, and technical assistance to indigenous communities. So where there are people already working, uh, but they need uh, uh, some strengthening, or they need some partnership, they need some collaboration, so that they can do more effectively uh, what they need to do. So, for example, we struggle to see why we would need to send an American pastor uh, to pastor a church in Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, 
we, we struggle with with that unless it's some unique for example if there was some kind of a international church uh, in Nairobi and it was all English speaking and there's people from all over the world and we need to find somebody who's comfortable in that kind of international arena that was not resident that might be an exception but it's a rare exception to the rule uh, our approach is to work on building the capacities of the indigenous communities. Uh, so, for example, we might be able to support four or five Kenyan pastors for what it would take to send one American uh, to be there. And I'm just using Kenya as an example, mm -hmm. it, it, wherever you are in any region of the world. Uh, there, there are some times, however, when there are unique uh, capacities uh, that people may have. So, for example, maybe somebody who's a physician. Mm -hmm. And uh, in a part of the world, in uh, say uh, Zimbabwe, for example, mm -hmm. uh, there may be a hospital, and they they understand they don't have physicians, and so to send a, a physician missionary to do that kind of work and to teach uh, best practices, modern medicine from that context, and to build capacities of local uh, practitioners, that would make sense to us. But again, that's the exception rather than the rule. And we feel that there are a number of mission agencies that are sending agencies who really populate uh, the, uh, their, their partners with folks from the U.S. who don't necessarily need to be there. So for us, it's a matter of stewardship so that we can deploy more people. It's also a matter of honoring uh, the integrity of people who are there and the capacity of people who are there. There's a, a Shona proverb uh, that I learned from Zimbabwe that said people in the village have the answers to their questions. Mm. Uh, so often they do have the answer to the question, but what they often don't have are the resources uh, to implement exactly. those solutions uh, that they are aware of. And so if we will uh, honor the capacity, respect, uh, people and celebrate the fact that you know God has been working and uh, in places all around the world and uh, for us to come along and join God uh, where God is already working uh, is something important and not to presume that nothing has happened before somebody from the United States or Western Europe arrived. Exactly. So that's our approach to come alongside, uh, to be partners, to collaborate uh, to honor the capacity of people and to know that just because you have more money than somebody else, that doesn't mean that you have you should have more power. Exactly. And for the viewers, I am familiar with this organization, and one of the reasons why Dr. Goatley and I are having this conversation in this way is because they're unique among organizations for the reasons that we've already cited, and also you periodically have short-term missions, and long-term missions where persons from churches go in and pastors go in and they don't take the place of what's there but they go along and augment what's there and also gives us a chance to see what's going on on the ground in different places and then perhaps go back and be recommitted to the work of missions kind of talk about the philosophy surrounding that Yes, well, we uh, have a pretty robust program of short-term mission assignments, and even our language is different. We don't talk about mission trips. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, we organize and deploy people on short-term assignments uh, as a part of their discipleship formation. Uh, we see doing short-term missions as a part of following Jesus and growing uh, as a Christian disciple. Uh, oftentimes, people have the assignment to listen, learn, encourage, and pray. Uh, and that's a culture shock for a lot of Americans mm -hmm. who say, I want to go do something for somebody. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we have to help people understand is you're not called to do something for somebody. You're called to come along with somebody. Exactly. Uh, to share and uh, to follow the lead of the people who know what's going on. So, for example, we've been deploying uh, men. Uh, the last year uh, to Haiti uh, to help build housing uh, in the aftermath of the historic 2010 earthquake. Well, we work alongside Haitians who will be moving into houses and we work under the uh, guidance of Haitian general contractors. 
So even though we've had some uh, uh, U.S. contractors, we had some U.S. engineers, but what they do, their assignment is to come alongside and to support. Now, while we're learning and we're serving and we're learning, we have the opportunity to share. So if somebody has some experience of something that would benefit, it's an opportunity to share that and to see if that will help somebody else. But you don't come in uh, taking over and presiding over something. Uh, so we're up with, um, I had a goal uh, last year of deploying 100 men to build 10 houses in Haiti. Uh, we last year got to 81 men and they built 12 houses. So oh, mercy. Uh, we're not on the men, but we are over delivered on the housing. So we have uh, three more teams that are going out, uh, two in November and then one in March. Uh, so I'm de we're determined and confident that we're going to have our 100 men uh, it took us a little more than 12 months to get there, but we're satisfied we're going to get there. But we've already over-delivered in terms of the housing that we're building. Also, we're blessed to have a team to a church to underwrite the building of a community center in that uh, community is called Lambi Sustainable Village, not too far from Leogard, which was the, inter, uh, the uh, epicenter uh, mm -hmm. of the earthquake. So that's one example. We uh, have a team of physicians who are going to November and uh, going to Liberia in November. It's two physicians and two nurses. Uh, they're going to be doing medical care. Uh, so that's an example. And, and we will also include some Liberian nurses to work alongside our team. And that's important because we're not presuming that we know everything and we know we need people who know that context and we respect them as a part of the team. And there'll be times where they're interpreting to us something that's going on and a time where our physicians and medical professionals will be able to benefit for them. The program that you talked about, uh, that you were a part of, that pastoral excellence program, uh, was an excellent opportunity for pastors to do a service learning experience. So as you experience, you come alongside and work in community, work in context. And so if a pastor is doing visitation, our U.S. pastors were doing visitation. If they were doing a preaching or teaching, our pastors would share and do the assignment that they were given. And uh, it really was a transforming experience for a number Indeed. of pastors who went. But it also was a blessing for those uh, who were the hosts. And uh, oftentimes people from the U.S. will say, I went and I was blessed more than they were blessed. Well, it's not a matter of competing for who gets blessed the most, uh, but it's a matter of serving and learning together so that all of us are able to grow as disciples. So that's our model for short-term mission assign uh, assignments. It's designed to enhance and contribute to the uh, discipleship formation uh, and it's really transforming experiences uh, when we can go and be challenged with some of our assumptions and be introduced to new ways of serving alongside with people who often don't have any of the things we assume are essential tools for us and there are people in other parts of the world doing great ministry. Uh, so that's our approach and we're thankful for it. Uh, we have uh, probably 10 teams lined up uh, to travel this year, several to Haiti. We have a team uh, on its way to Zimbabwe uh, in January. Uh, we have a team of about uh, 25 women headed for South Africa in April. And we're going to try to deploy some young adults to Jamaica uh, in July uh, to do vacation Bible school. So we're trying to respond, have pastors, we have women, we have men, uh, we have young adults. And so we're trying to uh, support churches uh, as they are seeking to to do what the Lord is calling them to do. And together we can do much more than any of us can do alone. Hmm. I just had a black thought. Put your mind in gear and put your thinking cap on. 